Good day, guys. Today we're going to be installing a very slightly modified version of the stock OS on our R36S clone. A super easy way to tell if you have a clone is to remove all SD cards and power the system on. If you get this screen with no SD card installed, then it's booting from its internal storage and it is definitely a clone. Keep in mind, not all clones have internal storage. So just because you don't get this screen with no SD cards installed doesn't necessarily mean it's a genuine unit. We're over on our Windows 10 computer now, and to get started, we do need to download a few files. I'm just on the R36S wiki, which I will link down below in the description. We want to click on R36S clones. Next, we want to click custom firmware for the Emulec clone. We want to go down a little bit, and under Emulec, we want to download the K36S stock firmware Emulec 4.7 with unlocked options. On the right, you can see the file name is Hua KY. That is the file we want to download. And there are three download links for it, Google Drive, Mediafire, or Mega. All three are mirrors. I usually prefer Google Drive since I do get better speeds. But if for some reason the Google link isn't working, you can use Mediafire or Mega. We'll also need a program to write the image to our micro SD. And for that, I always like to use Rufus. Just going back to Google, typing in Rufus, R-U-F-U-S. Click on the top result, rufus.ie. Scroll down a little bit to get to the downloads. And I'm going to download the portable version with a P next to it. At the time I'm making the video, it's 4.6. We'll also need something that can handle compression. I like to use 7-zip. Go back to Google, type in 7-zip. Go to the top link, 7-zip.org, and download the correct version for your computer, either 32-bit or 64-bit. With those three files downloaded, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. If you downloaded 7-zip because you don't already have it installed, simply double click on the executable and follow the few on-screen instructions to have it installed. Once that's done, we want to extract our raw image file. Simply right click on our GZ file, go to 7-zip and go to extract here. Once it's finished extracting, we'll open up the folder and just make sure there is an image file in there and there is. Again, you might not see the .image extension. With that out of the way, I'm just gonna insert a cheap 16 gig micro SD card into my cheap USB SD reader and I'll pop it into the computer. With our SD card inserted, it's gonna open up Rufus. Under device, make sure you select your correct SD card. For me, it's 16 gig. Leave disk or ISO image as default and click select. Navigate to your downloads folder where you extracted the raw disk image. Open up the disk image, there it is there, and double click on it. Leave everything else as default and click start. Just remember you will lose everything on the micro SD card. So make sure there's nothing important on there that you wanna keep. Also, you do not need to format the SD card before writing the image. It doesn't necessarily hurt anything by formatting. It is just a wasted step. When you're ready, click start, click okay. Once it's finished writing, click close. That's all you have to do to write the image to the SD card. We'll quickly check disk management just to verify what partitions were created, which should help you troubleshoot if you have any issues yourself. Just right click on the start menu and click disk management. So our SD card is disk two, the very bottom one. And we have a one gig partition, a 32 meg partition, 16 meg at the start, and the rest of the SD card is unallocated. Your unallocated size should differ depending on the size of your SD card. Next, we wanna safely eject our SD card. Just right click at the bottom and safely eject. We'll move back over to our R36S clone. Back over on our R36S clone, it's going to insert our freshly created SD card into the right hand side slot. And we'll just power it on. Straight away, we get a K36S logo, which is a good sign. The first boot can take few minutes so be patient and don't turn the device off. If you have a black screen during this still leave the unit on for around five minutes so it can finish its initial boot. After around a minute we did get to the main menu. If you had a black screen the entire time don't panic it just means you need to find the correct DTB files. So now it's finished its initial setup we want to safely power off the device. I like to press start go down to quit and shut down system. Once it's turned off we'll take the SD card out put it back into our Windows 10 computer. Back on our computer, just popping the SD card into my reader, back into the computer. And you can see we do have one one gig partition with only 100 meg free space. This is our boot partition. For us, Windows didn't automatically assign a drive letter, so we'll have to do it manually. Right click on start menu, go back to disk management, find our SD card, which is disk one for me. On the very right hand side, we can see the last partition is EE ROMs. I'm gonna right click on that, change drive letter and paths. Click add, click okay, and close off disk management. Now you can see we've got our eROMs partition. We'll open it up, take a look. Here's all our systems. So this is where you would copy your ROMs to. For example, for PSP games, open up PSP and paste your games into this folder. If during the initial boot, you only had a black screen, then as mentioned, you will need to download 
different screen files. It's gonna open up Google Chrome and we're just gonna to go to the K36 DTB GitHub. I will link this down below as well. Wanna click on code and wanna click on download zip. Once it's finished downloading, we can close off Chrome once more, go to our downloads folder and we wanna extract our K36 DTB zip. Let's right click, 7-zip, extract. Open up the folder. Inside there's six panel folders. Since we don't have a DTB file to compare it to, we will have to check all six panel types manually. For me, it did work out the box. But for you, I'd recommend starting at panel one. Copy the DTB file and then open up your boot folder on the SD card, which for me is Emulac G Drive. And we will just paste it in here. Next, I'll rename our old DTB and I'll just add .bak to the end of it. Next, I wanna copy the file name. So go to rename, highlight it and control C. And I wanna paste it to our DTB file. We just copied over, click enter. With that done, you can safely eject your micro SD and put it back into your R36S clone, power it on. If there's still a black screen, power it off and repeat the same steps for panel two through six until you find a working panel. If for some reason you still don't have anything on the screen, then it might be worth posting in the R36S subreddit in case someone has a working DTB file for you. I'll copy a few games and ports over to our easy ROMs partition off camera and we'll come back. We have finished copying all our files over. So we'll put our micro SD card back into our clone on the right hand side slot and we'll power it on. Now it says it has found 11 games, which is a good sign. And you can see straight away, we do have an options menu. I believe this is the only thing changed from stock OS. Everything else is untouched. So we'll see what's in our options. There's copy USB ROMs to device. So it's pretty handy if you've got them on a flash drive, create ROM directories. I guess this is for SD2. File manager, you can install Pixelcade, LED marquees. That does require internet. Install Portmaster, which is uh, interesting, but that also requires internet. Install Drastic, launch Terminal, definitely look into that. Scan for scum VM games, send logs, show last Emulec, and YouTube search. Now, unfortunately, USB tethering does not work on this build, so we can't connect it to our Android phone like we normally would. Also, the two wireless USB adapters I have aren't supported. They're both Realtek. I have ordered an MT7601 chipset-based adapter, which unfortunately didn't arrive in time for filming, but apparently that should work. I've also ordered two random Ethernet USB adapters, which we'll also try in a follow-up video. So because we don't have internet, we can't install Pixelcade, Portmaster, or Drastic. I am sort of hoping Drastic is already pre-installed. We'll check that in a second. But for now, I want to see what Launch Terminal does. I'm guessing it brings up a terminal shell. And it did. Now, obviously there's no on-screen keyboard. None of the buttons work. So I'll go get a USB keyboard. And we'll plug it in and see if we can type anything. It's got our cheap Dell keyboard, nothing fancy. And I have connected it to our USB-C OTG adapter. Plug it into the right-hand side port and we'll see if it works. It does. So we'll do LS. There's our file system. We don't have internet, so we can't do app get update or anything like that. Don't think there's gonna be screen fetch installed. We'll definitely circle back to this when we have internet working on it and we'll see if we can do anything cool on it. Maybe even install a desktop environment like Xorg in ArcOS for genuine R36S units, which we have covered in a previous video. See what typing exit does? It just brings us back to here. So it looks like we will have to power cycle the clone to get out of this uh, shell. So we're back to the main menu after power cycling and we'll see if our ports show up. Unfortunately, no ports option, but there was an install portmaster script which does require internet in options. So we'll definitely revisit that in a future video when we have internet on this clone. I think we'll try out a few higher end systems to see how well they perform. This is Mario Kart 64. And it does seem to work pretty much the same out of the box, which is good. We didn't change any settings. This is all stock. We'll see if FN does anything. So function is disabled on this version. I believe it is fixed in a different release but it doesn't work out of the box on stock. Start and select also doesn't quit. There's no save states. In fact, we can't bring up any, uh... oh, there we go. So select and X brings up the retroarch menu and that's how we quit. We go back, go down to quit, there we go. So no shortcuts out of the box to quit, unfortunately. It looks like Nintendo DS did show up, so we didn't have to run install drastic, at least not yet. We'll see if it loads. And it did load. So you don't need to run the install drastic script. So it does work fine, but unfortunately there was no full screen toggle. Just uh, left or right or top and bottom. L2 does nothing. L and R obviously mapped to L and R on the DS itself. Pushing the left joystick in does bring up the drastic menu, as you'd expect. 
and from here we can quit. Next up is Chuchi Rocket for the Dreamcast. It is all in Japanese. It does seem to run fine, even though it, uh, I did select Japanese on the main menu by accident. Again, select an X to bring up the RetroArch menu. Press B to go back to the main menu. Press up to go down to quit, and quit. No shortcut here. This is Crash Bandicoot 1 for the PlayStation 1. I'm expecting it to run pretty much flawlessly. And it does seem to be, which is good. There's no weird graphical itches and no, uh, no slowdowns. Again, there's no shortcut to quit. We'll see if there's save states. And it doesn't seem to be a shortcut to save state, but you can bring up the RetroArch menu and manually save in here. There you go, save states and save state. And lastly, here's Mega Man Powered Up for the PSP. It does seem fine. There's the lag spike there. I've had lag spikes in pretty much every uh, every system. I've noticed on ArcOS, for a genuine R36S, they aren't as noticeable. But on the clones, I haven't been able to play this game without the occasional lag spike. It does seem to run uh, pretty much the same otherwise. Pressing Start and Select in PPSSPP does actually quit the game though, so that's interesting. We'll go back into it and see if we can bring up the PPSSPP menu. So Select and B brings up the PPSSPP menu, so this is where you would change your settings if you wanted to. Just something to keep in mind. Overall, it's pretty much the same as the internal OS that's built into most clones, but this one obviously does have the options menu. If you weren't aware, stock OS does not come with Portmaster, so when I get my various USB Ethernet and Wi-Fi adapters, if we can get internet working on it, we'll definitely take a look at the install Portmaster script in options, and also have a play around with Terminal and see if we can get anything cool installed on that. I wouldn't really recommend anyone trying to install this as their main go-to, just since the custom Arc OS build for these clones is so much better, and ports does work out of the box on them. I believe the custom Arc OS build is still based on this stock OS, but if for some reason you can't get the custom Arc OS build working on your clone, and you've tried everything, I guess this might be a decent backup option, especially if you've broken some settings on the internal OS. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.